Today we're going to be discussing and well, reviewing Me, Earl and the Dying Girl. Uh, a recent film that's been doing very well at Sundance and has been receiving quite a fair amount of critical praise and has a 8.2 on IMDb. Unfortunately for me, the title alone was enough to put me off and uh, steer clear. And of course, the sort of themes that you can tell just from the title have been done quite a lot recently. However, uh, Toby, you've actually seen the film. Uh, what are your thoughts? Yes, yeah, you are right. It, it has done very well at Sundance. Uh, it got a standing ovation there. I can't believe that. <laughs> uh, critical uh, reviews are very, very positive as well. Um, in in the the bracket of loving the film rather than liking it. For me, I, I liked it. There's a lot of flaws with it. I would say, uh, not deserving of its 8.2 on IMDb or its its you know mass critical appraisal. I I, I think the big problem with with it is that it it thinks that it's more intelligent than it actually is. I think it's it thinks that it's got a lot more depth than it does. It's I think it's a little bit shallow. Um, it's got some nice references and some good uh, humour in it, some really funny jokes um, at points. A lot of them delivered by the uh, always brilliant Nick Offerman as well in the role of, um, of Greg's dad. Um, but ultimately the, the story, as you said, it has been done a lot lately and of course standing up to scrutiny it's got to compete with the other particularly big two that I would say would be The Fault in Our Stars and Restless, Restless which I know you favorite, really enjoyed. Yeah. Um, the story here uh, concerns Greg who uh, spends a lot of time with Earl, his friend making movies, they're quite geeky insular characters um, and they then suddenly one day hear the news that a girl in their class uh, Rachel has been diagnosed with cancer so they set out to make her happy and, and create a, a friendship um, which doesn't actually exist until they they hear this news. It's for me it's, this seems strange it didn't remind me too much of The Fault in Our Stars or Restless um, not not thematically but um, it reminded me a little bit of Be Kind Rewind in the sense that it's got all these movie references both visual and um, within the dialogue but it, it, it does the problem with it is it never references Be Kind Rewind it never it would be funny if it was that aware of itself it, because it thinks it's doing something very new and very creative in this whole playful arty world and it, it's not actually it's just a copycat fusion of Be Kind Rewind and maybe Restless um, and for me I like I I thought it was just the emotion was a little bit misplaced um, and it just some of the some of the things were a little bit missed but overall as a sort of a a, a drama a, a sort of it is a it is a coming of age drama essentially it's it's good if not great so uh, see it by all means but you know for me you're looking at probably I'd say a, a six or a seven out of ten. Okay, so it's all right, not not terrible, but not going to make it into your favourites list. No, no it, it, the critical claim that it has at the moment is, is um, you know, it's that's against the type. I'd say people who I've seen it with as well thought, you know, it was it was good if not great, as people are making out. Well, well done. Uh, who directed it? Um, Alfonso Gomez Rejon. Welcome to third place. <laughs> <laughs> That's still a place on the podium. 